Today's topic, I'm gonna to talk about three quick ways to get into ketosis. Keto is a very powerful way to burn fat, to have good energy levels, to bring down inflammation. So how do you get into ketosis? Because there's many ways. If you go one route, could take you months. Another route could take you weeks. Maybe this route could take you days. I wanna give you a quick way to get into ketosis, three quick ways, and also, show you some steps so you don't get the keto flu or the brain fog or anything like that. So here are the three ways to enter keto quickly. What does that even mean? That means your body starts burning fat for fuel and it stops being a sugar burner, which is what we want. Number one, intermittent fasting. I'm gonna get a little bit into that. Number two, MCT oil or brain octane oil from Bulletproof. And number three, caffeine. I got a cool study to show with you. With caffeine. If you want to learn more about these tips and also how the four pillar approach to get fat adapted, go to ketokickstartguide.com. You can get that for free. So number one, quick way to get into keto. Now there's a caveat here. You want to be fat adapted before you do any kind of intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is a powerful tool. A chainsaw is a powerful tool. A chainsaw could get the job done and get you good results. Fasting could get the job done and get you good results. A chainsaw could injure you and hurt you if you don't know what you're doing. Fasting could injure you and hurt you if you don't know what you're doing. So rule number one, my first pillar, I have a four pillar approach to perfect health, become fat adapted. Then you could do some intermittent fasting. This is a great technique for somebody who has already been keto adapted and maybe they had a cheat meal or a cheat week or a cheat month and they wanna go back into ketosis, doing some fasting, 18 to 24 hours will do the trick. Why? Because when you fast, you produce something called glucagon, okay? This is a hormone that goes up as your glycogen and insulin go down. What the heck does that mean? Well, we eat food, we store that food into strings of sugar called glycogen. Think of that as your sugar reserve. Think of it as a wallet. You go into your wallet, you put cash, you take cash out. It's very easy access to go in and out and get cash out of your wallet. Now think of your body fat, your fat stores, as the bank account down the street at your local bank. It's a longer process to get to. You need to drive in your car, wait in line, show documentation, then you have access to your bank account. But when you get access to it, it's almost unlimited reserves. Now the wallet has limited reserves, which is your glycogen, your sugar reserves. You have about 2,000 calories. So when you're fasting 16, 18, 24 hours, you're depleting your sugar reserves so your glycogen, which is your sugar reserves, goes down, insulin stays low, and your glucagon goes up. This is great because it teaches your body to burn fat and produce ketone bodies. That's what we want. We wanna get into ketosis. Now, like I said at the bottom here, we want this to be a tool for somebody who has already been fat adapted. I love intermittent fasting. It's a powerful tool to get into keto. And if you're already full on, keto adapted and you've done some fasting and you really wanna ramp up your ketones, do some block fasting. I'm gonna be doing some block fasting with my students in January. We're gonna do a five day water fast. If you wanna learn more about intermittent fasting, go to fastingcheatsheet.com and you can get my book for free. So that's number one way to get into ketosis quickly. Number two is gonna be something called medium chain triglycerides, AKA MCT oil. Now you've heard of coconut oil, 60% of coconut oil is made up of medium chain triglycerides. So the cool thing about MCT oil, it, do, it does not have to go through the liver. So it bypasses that and it quickly enters the bloodstream. It's really, really neat. So it gets into the mitochondria of your cell and it produces energy fast. That's such a cool little hack. Here is your cell, we're made up of trillions of cells. You have your DNA. You have your mitochondria, think of that as like the power plant that produces energy. The energy that it produces is ATP. So when you take MCT oil, it quickly goes into your cells and it signals to your mitochondria to produce ATP, to produce ketone bodies to give you energy. So MCT is a cool little hack. I have this at the bottom here that I tell all my students and clients to follow, the 2222 rule, which I got from my mentor, Dr. Dan Pampa. This will definitely help you become fat adapted and produce ketones. Every day, I recommend having two tablespoons of MCT oil or coconut oil, two tablespoons of butter, grass-fed butter or ghee. I like Kerrygold as a great grass-fed butter brand. Two tablespoons of olive oil. Make sure it's real, extra virgin, cold processed 
olive oil, and two teaspoons of sea salt. That's not table salt, it's sea salt. That sea salt is very important for somebody who's going keto because if you don't replenish your electrolytes, you're gonna end up getting brain fog and the keto flu. You've heard all about the keto flu, I'm sure. Because what happens is, we talked about the glycogen, your sugar reserves. As you deplete that, your body dumps out electrolytes with the sugar reserves, which is good. It's normal, it's natural. We want to replenish the electrolytes with sea salt so you don't feel like crap. So that's an important caveat. Follow this two, 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 two rule. You're going to be just fine. Number three way to get into ketosis, caffeine. This is going to make a lot of people happy. That's why I put that smiley face here. Coffee or tea and or tea. This study, I'm going to put it down in the description notes. This study shows caffeine doubled the amounts of ketone bodies and free fatty acids of the subjects who had caffeine versus the subjects who did not have caffeine. That's why I love having my coffee in the morning. I have what's called bulletproof coffee. So I have organic coffee with MCT oil and butter and I blend it all together. I actually use something called brain octane oil from bulletproof. It's great and it's been proven to help increase your ketones naturally. My favorite brands for coffee, my favorite brand for coffee is going to be Purity. Purity makes amazing shade-grown organic coffee, high antioxidants, no mold, it's been tested, it's the best coffee out there. And then I really like Peak Tea. You can find the links down below on where to get it, but Peak makes a great green tea. And the cool thing about Peak Green Tea It has something in it called catechins, which help actually burn belly fat, targets belly fat. So that's a great little hack if you're doing keto or doing fasting to drink peak tea. Those are the three quick ways to get into keto. Now, how do you know if you're in keto? How do you test for it? What's the most accurate way to test for ketosis? Well, let me share that with you right now because I knew you were asking about it. Here is a great way to test for keto to see if you're in ketosis. I like this company called Keto Mojo. Again, I'll put the link down below and it's a finger prick test. So they give you some glucose strips, they give you some ketone strips. It's, uh, you wanna have your ketones at 0.5 and above. Anything at 0.5 and above is considered ketosis. If you're like 0.2, 0.3, you're borderline ketosis, but 0.5 and above is where you wanna be to say, I'm in ketosis. This is more accurate than something like a urine test or a breath test. I love the Keto Mojo machine, it's not expensive. I have my clients sending me pictures, look at my ketones today, look at my glucose today. It's a great way to test and not just guess uh, if you are in ketosis. Now, if you are in ketosis and you're not testing because you don't wanna go this route, I get it, that's fine. There is a feeling of um, euphoria when you're in ketosis. Whenever I'm giving a health lecture uh, lecture or I'm doing a podcast interview or I'm doing a Facebook Live like this, I'm gonna make sure I'm in ketosis. I'm fasting because I feel great, I'm on top of my game, I'm mentally sharp, I'm creative, and I'm able to crush the day. And you just know, it's a great feeling. It's hard to put into words, but you know when you're in keto, but this is a great way to to see how good you are at producing ketones. Now, this is a question I get asked all the time because I talk about autophagy. What the hell is autophagy? That is when your body breaks down damaged cells and builds up new cells. And you get autophagy when you go low carbs, or low protein or low calories or you're doing some fasting. So keto definitely gets some autophagy. If you wanna get the biggest bang for your buck when it comes to autophagy, this is the ratio to follow. And this is the ratio that was given to me from Dr. Thomas Seafried. Dr. Thomas Seafried is a world-renowned cancer doctor out of Boston College. He wrote the book, Cancer as a Metabolic Disease. And what he says is that if you were to perform a five, or actually he says seven day, water fast once per year, you would reduce your, t- your chances of getting any cancer by 95%. That's because your body is going to get into autophagy. It's like a fasting switch or a keto switch. And your body is so intelligent, it has this innate intelligence where it's going to seek out damaged cells, damaged proteins, and it's going to use that for fuel and then build up the healthy cells. So he came up with the formula to get the max autophagy, and this is a great way to know if you're getting that max autophagy if you're testing your keto mojo. So what you wanna do is you wanna take your glucose and you wanna divide it by 18. And you wanna make sure you have a one-to-one ratio. That's maximum nutritional ketosis and autophagy. So we, let's say for example, you have your glucose and you take it in the morning and it's, your fasting glucose is 72. That's really good, by the way. 
and then you test your ketones and it's 4.1, solid, awesome. So you would take 72, which is your glucose, you would divide it by 18, which will give you four, and then you would compare that to your ketones, which is 4.1. So that's a, a little bit better than a one-to-one -one ratio, so you are golden. You're getting a lot of this autophagy, and you're able to prevent disease and feel good and get all the benefits of keto and fasting. So this is a cool little formula that I'll put down below and you could use. I have all my stu students doing it. It's a great little hack. So to summarize the three ways, the qu three quick ways to get into keto, intermittent fasting, 18 to 24 hours, and then you wanna have some MCT oil or some brain octane oils, and then you wanna do a little bit of some caffeine because caffeine could double the rate of ketones that you produce. So for me, my morning routine, I wait an hour and a half to have my coffee. Why do I do that? Because if you have your coffee within an hour and a half of waking up, that coffee is pretty much rendered useless because the caffeine does not stand a chance to cortisol. When you wake up in the morning, you have a natural surge of cortisol, which is your fight or flight hormone. It gives you energy to conquer the day. Back in the day, it gave us energy to fight a beast or run away from that beast. Today it helps us just deal with meetings and presentations and Facebook Lives and videos and of that sort. So cortisol is much more powerful than caffeine. So if you have your coffee first thing in the morning, that caffeine is going to be rendered useless because cortisol overtakes it. But here's a cool thing. If you wait an hour and a half after you wake up, cortisol begins to peak down, then you have your coffee with your MCT oil and your butter or whatever way you wanna have it, that's gonna help bind together with the cortisol and give you long-term sustainable energy for the rest of the day. It's a neat little hack that's been proven to help you have more energy throughout the day. So my morning routine is I wait an hour and a half, then I have my Bulletproof coffee, and then I continue fasting usually until around three or 4 p.m., and then I'll have two or three feast meals within that window, and then I'll go back into keto. So that's been working for me. Find what works for you. Hope this has been helpful for you. I've had a lot of fun teaching you this. If you wanna learn more about how to get keto adapted and how to go in and out of keto, which is what I teach, get my book, The Keto Kickstart Guide. Go to ketokickstartguide.com and get it for free. Subscribe to this video, share it with a friend. Have a healthy day.